and then we'll see everybody else who says entrepreneur in their Instagram profile right now when they're working in Bank of America in 24 months. And so that's what I'm waiting for. I'm, I'm, I'm most excited for and waiting for and hoping for complete global economic carnage so that we can weed out the B and C and D players. Hey vlog, CS, working, busy. Babin wanted something, but I don't have much to say. I've been in fucking meetings all day. That's it, see ya. But nice view. Amazing. It's what the world been missing Understood. Yo, brother and sister Regardless race or religion Muslim, Jewish, Buddhist, or Christian I ain't tripping Let's pay more know. respect To our Great. mother, sister, this and women We all got struggle Some with addition Where am I going? Got it. Oh, I'm going. Right here? Yeah, yeah, yeah Okay, okay. Let's okay. set this scene up <laughs> Babin, stop crying Like, <laughs> it's just fucking How's CS I'm saying? busy I mean, like I can't always Any like It's up long? to you Like, it's up to you uh, Aleski Mara, it's up to you, Aleski Mara, you to fix this. Tags. Aleski, it's yeah. me, it's me, Luis. <laughs> I'm about to give a talk here with uh, Samsung and uh, Entrepreneur Magazine. And hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good to see Thanks you. for having me. Yeah, uh, and so, only event I'm doing here at CS, small little group, should be good. Uh, not exactly sure what I'm going to talk about, but I'll figure it the fuck out. It'll be the meat of this episode. I've just been busy as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Very nice. Very nice, man. For you, Great. You're sitting in your chair. Awesome. <laughs> I am going to introduce the moderator. He will Great. introduce you. Yeah, yeah, you. Good week. Thank, thanks for doing this. No problem, man. Super happy to be here. Remember that's that? a really great part of that talk, that two hour talk yep. in LA. That was Startup it, grind. So, I remember it. I call you all the time, man. Thank you, brother. To this day, you've been just like a big guiding factor thank in you, brother. motivating me and keeping me on track in terms thank of you, brother. what I want. We're going to start. Thank you. So, thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. See you. Next slide. We just start this thing. So, Gary, come on up. Thank you. What kind of conversations are you having here? What are you seeing? Or who are you meeting with that you're really excited about? What kind of technologies are you seeing that you're really excited about? I think what's very unique about CES is that uh, people get very excited about what's coming. So I'm always a big fan of, and I know a lot of you feel, some of you here follow my content, I'm very big on day trading attention. What that really means is I like being practical. I don't, I don't like when people think I'm a futurist or, or a disruptor. Uh, I don't think I am. I actually think all I am is just very practical. I try to pay attention to what you're paying attention to at scale right now, and how do I bring you value in those environments. So the thing that's interesting to me here is everyone's talking about you know, voice and IOT and you know, connected this, connected that, which is absolutely gonna happen. I'm super excited about it. I can't wait to never leave my fucking room. Like it's all gonna be great. But for me, I think it clouds a lot, which is there's a lot of company. I would say the far majority of companies here will go out of business before the promise of what they're trying to deliver on becomes consumer at scale. And so for me, I'm excited but tempered in trying to help people stay alive for the holy grail. The, the, you know, there's a lot of people in 2007 that thought social media was gonna be big. The difference between me and a lot of them was I knew how to stay alive from 2007 to 2013 before it became really real. And you know, for me, that's what CS always reminds me, which is, great, I can't wait to have my robot you know, wipe my ass, but before that happens, make sure that you're still in business in 2027. And so there's a little bit too much 2027 talk for me, um, but at the flip side, I love that people are inspired, excited, meeting new people, bouncing ideas, thinking about things differently. And I would argue for everybody I'm looking at right now, if you see something that allows you to then use that as a proxy to be practical over the next 24 months, 
that to me is interesting uh, in, in, in the way I think about CES. I used to come to events like this and nobody knew who the hell I was and I was in the wine business and it made no sense for me to be here. I'm an extrovert. It's comfortable for me to do what I recommend these people, which is if you literally don't know each other, it's probably a good idea to say hello. You've got a common point of view of where the world's going. As many people as there are here, it's still a very tiny percentage of the net score. And so for me, it was comfortable to come to something like this, listen to people, and say hello, grab a business card, send an email, try to build a relationship. I'm a big believer in serendipity. I didn't chase the people on stage. I knew equally that the person sitting right next to me in a 13-year macro might be valuable to me. Um, And so my advice to everybody who's not being chased down and cameras and all this, is to say hello to the person next to them because that's how life actually works. Now, there's a lot of people here that are shy. You know, I grew up with parents that had an accent. This is an international show. Like, there's a million things that I can run through my mind from the psychology of why every person here now won't look to the person to the left and right and say hello. It still doesn't make the advice wrong. That is the ROI. The ROI, my friends, everything you've seen here, you could watch on the fucking internet next week. (laughs) The ROI of coming to this thing is to engage with the people next to you right this second. There's nothing I'm gonna say right now that you haven't heard me say in some other version for the last fucking decade. And you gotta remember that everybody's here to meet people. That's the funny thing, it's like, you're- Yes, but, go ahead, please. Well, you're, you're, you're afraid of reaching out, but you want to connect, and you have to remember that the other people are thinking the exact same thing. There, when people come, when you ask people why do you come to something like this, why do you go to some conference, the answer is always to meet other people. That's always, always the number one thing. It's not to like watch the people on stage, unless it's you. But otherwise, it's to, it's to, it's to meet the people who are there. Yeah, I mean, in South by Southwest 2007, Mark Zuckerberg asked me to introduce him to Kevin Rose, the founder of Dig. Like, like you, like. The world changes. And so, you know, the people that get to sit on the big stage, things like this, that, the other, like, they change. Um, But you have access to everybody. I mean, there's fucking hundreds of thousands of people here. I'm just a very big fan of saying hello versus pitching. You know, I, I wrote a book called Jab, 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 Right Hook because I really wanted to establish the way I think of it, which is I just think that Herb and Greg should know each other. I don't think that Greg should pitch Herb his business. I think they should just say hello and create context and then something may come from that. And uh, I just believe in that. I don't, I don't know what else to tell you. I think it's very practical. Let's, let's talk as technology. Greg, say hi to Herb. <laughs> hello, Greg. Greg. Uh, Marco and the guy who's the tag is, uh, Robert, now you know each other. So, uh, you already know each other. All right, well, whatever. So, Gary, um, VaynerMedia's got a division called Veer Smart. Yes. Where you are using new technologies, AR, VR, and other things to connect brands with consumers. Talk to me about being on that cutting edge, how you stay on it. I, I've got very focused on IoT products, re, re, products like literally your beer reordering itself for you, smart refrigerator being more important than anything. But the reality is Vayner Smart was named three years ago when I started it and the, the promise didn't come true. Meaning, it's not moving as fast as I wanted to, thought it might. So now what Vayner Smart does really is an obnoxious amount of Alexa skills and Google Home skills and even podcast marketing, which is very basic, that could be in media, um, because voice has become very real. You know, I, I'm spending an enormous amount of time thinking about that. And so Vayner Smart itself is probably gonna get rebranded because it's encompassing with AR and machine learning. I'm starting to realize, okay, the things that I know are gonna happen in a 10 year macro, but I don't know exactly when and how it's going to pop, I need to create a division where it's highly not profitable because I'm just investing. Uh, And so Vayner Smart and some of the ML and AI and AR stuff is there. And then stuff that's even further out, like VR consumer or some of the connected stuff we're seeing here, that will just sit in my investing world and networking world, not as an official uh, department. Did diagnose the problem? Was it because it's hard to move an organization at the speed that technology is changing? No, 
the technology hasn't delivered on the promise of its speed. I don't know one fucking consumer product that's reordered itself for itself for anybody in this home. Like, it's always about, my mistakes in my career are always timing. Always. Like, I understand consumer behavior so well that it's been my calling card. I really know that everybody's gonna do a lot of things here. Like, online dating was obvious. You know, I didn't think it was weird dudes in their basements. I thought it was gonna be Tinder. But, and I invested in Yobongo and One and Highlight and everything. I got unlucky that Tinder was incubated inside of IAC. I knew that was gonna happen. Everybody here is going to be very deep in IOT and voice and order their toothpaste while they're, it's all happening. It's not the, tech, the technology, so much of the promise here is going to be four to six years later than they said when they talked to you at the booth. So we move fast as fuck because I'm willing to lose money. The technology wasn't fast. So how do you stay, how, are you looking, are, are you trying to plan out to the four to six years when, when, when something that is talked about now is actually going to Always. be enacted? Always, yeah. I mean, I, I lost a fortune last year on voice strategists because I could taste that it was gonna be now, right? And, I, and whether it was 2018 scopes, which I've signed with clients, or 2019, I knew it wasn't gonna be 2020. I can't say that for a lot of the technology we see, we see here. So for me, I'm not scared if I think it's really close within a year, year and a half. Um, look, I bought cryptocurrency in 2014, but it wasn't because, I didn't know when or how, and I didn't even know if, I really didn't. Um, I just knew maybe, or kinda, or probably, or why it could. And when you play, when you look at the world, the, look, I think the fundamental separation that I have is really predicated on two things. I have empathy, so I'm thinking about what you're thinking about, and number two, I don't care about money in the short term. If you really actually understand what I just said on those two things, if you're actually consumer-centric and you don't need money in the short term, you always look like a fucking genius. It's, I don't like people and I don't like companies and businesses that are ideological. Like, there's way too many enthusiasts here that would like to see this shit happen. I don't like to anything to happen. I just wanna try to figure out what I think is going to happen. And a lot of times that's put me on in a place where people judged me and made fun of me until they didn't. All my friends made fun of me that I signed a case with sneaker deal because I had the audacity to think it would work until it all sold out in four hours and then they stopped laughing. And, and the reason it worked was because I understood where attention sat, right? And, and that's how I think about the world. When something works, you're a genius, and when it doesn't work, you're a fool. Success has unlimited fathers. Now everybody thinks they were involved, like Babin thinks he's the reason the K-Swiss sneakers sold, right? But failure has none, right? Yeah, I mean, look, but that's what makes it fun. If you're in a place where you're comfortable with accepting your losses, I'm proud to say up here that I've had a pivot, Vayner Smart, because the timing of IOT hasn't worked in the way that I thought it would. That's comfortable to me. It means me. you're watching the market. Yeah, to me that's comfortable. Like, I, I'm so sad that so many of you don't do things because you're worried about being judged. It makes me sad. Like that sucks, fuck, you know? Like to me, that's my loss. Like what's that got to do with you? Like I don't give a shit what you think, Marco. You know, like, like, you know, like I'm doing my thing and so when you start getting comfortable with losing in the micro, well then you can really start doing things and so for me that's why it's comfortable to day trade. If you day trade, you're gonna miss a lot. You just have to make more than you miss. And for me, I just am comfortable in that mentality. When brands come to you, how comfortable are they with this ride? In our story, we put this guy on the cover in June. Uh, the story about us and about you focused quite a lot actually on that on that division between the personal brand and the brand. And it was interesting to me. I didn't realize the degree to which you wanted those to feel separate. Yeah, I mean, look, I I don't want to be a charlatan or a motivational speaker or you know those aren't interesting to me. But I'm also willing to people to judge me and misunderstand me because I know how this all plays out at the end. 
So you can boo me in the second quarter. I'll talk to you after the game. And I like the way that you think of yourself as an R&D lab. That's what you're, you're testing. You're testing things on yourself that you think are going to pay, uh, pay out. Yeah, I mean like I didn't invest in Facebook and Twitter and Uber and Snapchat and, and buy cryptocurrency in 2014 and launch an e-commerce site in 1996 by accident. Like I didn't create a brand that allowed me to sign a sneaker deal bigger than 99% of athletes by accident. None of this is fucking accident. This is me being willing to eat shit and have humility and take negative feedback while I try to figure shit out. I work. I do shit. Like while everybody's debating, I'm doing it. And I'm willing to take micro losses for macro wins. And most people aren't because they want short term money or they actually value other people's opinions over their own. I realize that I mean nothing, which then doesn't allow me to have the audacity to be cynical or, or skeptical. It's real, you know? When I hear, I'm empathetic. And by the way, Parents having sex at the right moment giving me DNA, like this is not me. But I'm like, why am I not skeptical? Why am I not cynical? Oh, because what the fuck does my opinion mean in that, ver- like, the, like the amount of people dropping their two cents on social media to shit on somebody like they mean something? People try to build the biggest building in town by tearing everybody else's building down. When you have enough talent to just build the biggest building, you just build the biggest building. I could give a fuck about anybody else. I'm doing me. And honestly, I wish all of you the best and I even weirdly hope you beat me because that will keep me hungry. But the truth is, I'm not worried about other people's shit. Like, I, we're, ju- we're counting everybody else's points too much. Worry about your own shit. Now, that bubble will burst and then we'll get to see who's still around and then we'll see everybody else who says entrepreneur in their Instagram profile right now when they're working in Bank of America in 24 months. And so that's what I'm waiting for. I'm, I'm, I'm most excited for and waiting for and hoping for complete global economic carnage so that we can weed out the B and C and D players. Well Jesus, if you would stop talking a minute ago we would have ended on a high note but instead we ended on that. I don't think, by the way, that's where I think this is so fun. I think that is a high note. It's the same way I'm looking at what's happening now. The truth should win. If you're a piece of shit, you should lose. If you're not a good entrepreneur, you should have a job. Merit and the truth are always the winners in the macro. We're just in a micro right now and people are confused. It's Jennifer Clark, brilliant. All right, let's go find someone to sit. Back in the day, I love it. Uh, we work in the music sector now, doing like awesome. downloads. And, dude, your stuff is so motivational. Thank it's you, cool. brother. And we've been nice working for a while. Do your stuff. Are you here Thank for you. CES? Or something? Yeah, just just meetings. But it's good. Hey, Take care. You, Thank man. you. Thank you, you so much. Thanks again, Gary. Thank you, man. Take care. What's happening, Babin? Babin, I guess this is our thing. So I close it out. All right, good day. Just a bunch of fucking meetings. Obviously, Babin got his, uh, the meat of the episode in that talk. That was a good talk. It was a really good talk. Entrepreneur, Samsung. What was, uh, what was your highlight of CES and what are you kind of taking away from it? The quality time with you, Babin. That was yeah. the greatest part. Uh, just got a lot of fucking meetings done. It's always smart to go somewhere where you can save time by being there. Three days in Vegas saved me four fucking weeks of travel, so. I'm pumped, I'm in a good mood. Efficiency at scale. Hi, Linda. I am, I am, all right, I gotta go, bye. So love, y'all my sister and my brother. It doesn't matter your religion or your color. We should all be free to love who we love and be free from the judgment.